Hi, this is Jeff Ware, Vice President of Product Management Security Services, Oracle Cloud. Today, I'm going to walk you through a demo of four new cloud services from OCI as I build out the infrastructure required to add a secure administrative control plane to our MooShop storefront. This is our example e-commerce architecture. First, we'll create a bastion in the backend compartment of our store and then create a session for secure access. Bastion servers represent hardened access points that protect resources and infrastructure from unauthorized access. We'll choose an existing VCN and then define a CIDR block that enables us to route traffic. Here, I'm going to default to wide open all zeros. If you were doing this for real, you would enter CIDRs that match your VPN or IP ranges on premises. After the Bastion server has been created, will create a Bastion session. Now, a single Bastion can support multiple sessions. We'll add a session name, a username, and choose the server we're going to connect to. We'll put in the default user, in this case, Oracle Linux VM user OPC. Next, we're going to upload our public key that I'm going to use to connect to the session. Once the session is ready, I can grab the SSH connection string. Now let's connect to our Bastion using a terminal. I'm pasting in the string that I just grabbed from the console. And we've connected to the remote Bastion server. Now we're able to access the back end of our store securely. To help improve the security of our back end compartment, we'll add vulnerability scanning. This will examine our compute instances to help identify any problems. We'll create a scan recipe with the default settings that allows agents network scanning, and gathering of CIS benchmarks. We need to create a compute scanning target to scan the compartments and all of its virtual machines. Typically, you're going to see results within 15 minutes. Looking at the results, you're going to see a list of hosts scanned. And of course, you can drill down to a specific host. Review the CV is found on a host. Now we see the host scanning results, and we can examine the vulnerabilities that VSS, the Vulnerability Scanning Service, identified. We can look at the results of a specific host. The list of vulnerabilities identified for the host include a large number of issues where the risk is deemed high. Now we see the high level information about this critical vulnerability exposure. For more details, we reference the National Vulnerability Database to view all the CVE details. Of course, we can use OS management to patch these vulnerabilities found by installing the latest updates. From CloudGuard, you can set up the VSS detectors to allow detecting CVEs or open ports and reporting these as problems. When CloudGuard reports problems, you can drill down to the problem to view details. You can also click on a link that provides more information from VSS. So far, we've established secure access to our backend store and enabled vulnerability scanning. Next, we need to add a certificate to our front end so that our customers can visit the store securely. We're going to add a Private Certificate Authority, or CA, and this will automatically manage our front-end certificates and prevent them from ever expiring. Next, we're going to create a certificate that we can load on our front-end load balancer. Our certificate is going to be issued by our internal certificate authority, and we're going to name it LB Certificate. We'll leave it as a TLS client or server certificate. You can specify the period of time that you'd like the certificate to remain valid and also choose your key algorithm. Now we have our certificate for installation on our load balancer. Next, we need to create a load balancer. We'll select a load balancer that's publicly accessible. We'll also choose our certificate VCN and our public subnet. And we'll click Next to continue. We'll use weighted round robin as our load balancing policy and add our backend. Here, our backend is running Ubuntu Linux with an Apache web server. Now we're going to configure the listener, set up for a TLS connection on port 443. For our SSL certificate, we're going to specify a certificate service managed certificate and use the LB certificate that we created previously. Next, we have error logs and we'll accept the default configuration and hit Submit. 
Now our load balancer is up and running using a certificate from our certificate service. Finally, we're going to create a web application firewall or WAF policy that we can load and enforce on our load balancer. We need to specify some basic information and access rules for our WAF policy. We're going to add policy statements for access control and protection rules. For request control, we'll set a country region access rule that accepts traffic that originates from the United States. And it returns a 401 response code when the traffic comes from another region in the world. WAF also protects against DDoS attacks with a rate limiting feature. You can create rate limit rules based on URL path, request headers, source IP address, request method, and other parameters. For protection rules, we're going to specify protection from OWASP threats, which include cross-site scripting, SQL injection, and many others. We'll filter based on the tag and enable all the protection signatures. Add the request protection rule and click Next. As the final step, we'll review and apply policies created so they're enforced on our load balancer. Enabling WAF protection on our load balancer helps strengthen the security posture of our application by helping to protect it from common vulnerabilities, such as the OWASP top 10 and other layer seven attacks. In summary, we started by adding secure backend access with Bastion and used vulnerability scanning to check for security issues. For the front end of our application, we set up TLS using OCI certificates and web application firewall and load balancer. Although these new products help enhance the security for Oracle Cloud customers, integration with CloudGuard and Security Zones provides continuous enforcement of security policy and monitoring, thus simplifying management and reducing the chance of human error.